We have three chapters. In the first chapter, we'll take a look to Cisco iOS overview. In the second chapter, we are going to talk about iOS configuration basics. And in the last chapter, we are going to talk about IP addressing of the devices. So what is Cisco iOS? Cisco iOS, originally Internetwork Operating System, is a family of software used on most Cisco devices. iOS is a package of routing, switching, internetworking, and telecommunication functions integrated into a multitasking operating system. As you know, most of our hardware devices have a software operating system. For example, I'm using a PC and I have the operating system of maybe Windows. I'm using a cell phone and I'm using an operating system of maybe Android. For, exa for example, I'm using an iPhone and my operating system is iOS. That's not the same thing in here, but the same logic. Okay, these are both the operating systems of the devices and Cisco devices operating system is as known as Cisco iOS. Let's take a look at the features of the iOS. As we have talked in the previous section, Cisco iOS is located in Flash. This is a Flash as you can see. iOS is located in here. But after when the device is working, as we have talked also about this in previous sections too, iOS is compiled to volatile RAM. Cisco is updating the image files, the iOS files, and our iOS image can be updated. And iOS provides software hardware communication as the other operating systems. So how, I, how we can access to the Cisco iOS devices? The Cisco iOS command line interface is the primary user interface used for configuring, monitoring, and maintaining the Cisco devices. This CLI allows you to enter partial Cisco iOS configuration commands. The software recognizes a command when you enter enough characters of the command to uniquely identify it. And CLI can be accessed using by a console port, telnet, SSH, or AUX port. These two methods are used when we try to access a Cisco iOS device remotely. And the first access method is console port. If you want to use the console port, you should be next to this device or you should be using a console server. When you're next to the Cisco iOS device, as you can see in the picture, there is a spatial cable to connect it. You plug this one, you plug this side to your computer and you plug the other side, the console port of the Cisco device. Console port is accessible even if device is down in the network, there's no problem to reach it, and device must be in a safe place to prevent unauthorized access of the console port. And console port must be configured with a strong password. The second method that we can access a Cisco device is using Telnet. Telnet is used for accessing remotely over a network Access is lost if that network is down. Please keep in mind that Telnet is an insecure method to reach the device remotely because the session is not encrypted. And please keep in mind that if you want to configure a Telnet on your device, you should set a password too. For example, you are in the location of the A of the corporate and the device that you want to reach is in the location of the B. There's a network between these devices. So you can reach that device using that network. There should be a network to reach via Telnet. And if the network is down, you cannot reach the remote device using Telnet. Another method is SSH, which means secure shell. Secure Shell is used for accessing remotely over a network like Telnet and access is lost if the network is down again. This also requires a password too, but 
SSH provides strong password authentication and encryption, and that's why it is a secure method. So we offer to use SSH instead of Telnet all the time. And if you want to reach that devices remotely, or if you want to reach the devices via console port, you need to use a terminal emulation program. These programs are used for accessing to a device using console, telnet, or SSH. Popular programs are Putty, Secure CRT, or maybe Hyper Terminal. In the picture, you, you see the Putty interface. For example, if you want to connect to a device using an SSH session, you choose this SSH and you type the host IP address to this array, for example, something like, oops, something like that. And when you click open, you open your SSH session. If you want to connect via Ethernet, you choose here. If you want to connect to a console port, you should choose this serial connection. And let's take a look to the Cisco IOS, IOS mods. In the Cisco IOS mode, we have four modes. The first one is the user exec mode. When you are in user exec mode, you can see a sign, bigger than sign, that shows you that you are in the user exec mode. In the privileged exec mode, you see a pound sign. In the global configuration mode, that shows you that you are in global configuration mode, config. And we have also specific configuration mode like interface mode. For example, when you open an interface, you see that config if mode. Each mode has different commands that you can use. You can use less commands in the user exec mode. You can use less commands in the privileged exec mode if we compare with the global configuration mode. When you're global configuration mode, you can make configuration to the device. You can change the IP addresses, you can set the routing protocols and etc. But when you're in privileged exec mode, you can, you can run the show commands. You can make monitoring. This is a limited area. And the most limited area is the user exec mode. When you're in global configuration mode, and if you want to set an IP address to an interface, you should get into the specific configuration mode like an interface mode. For example, when you first When you first console to a device via your notebook, first you're in the user exec mode. And if you want to make an interface configuration, you should type enable to get into the privileged exec mode. After, if you want to configure an interface, you should type first config terminal and you must get into the config mode. And lastly, you should go to the interface that you want to config. For example, like interface fast Ethernet 01. We are going to talk too much about these things in our next sessions, but please keep in mind that how we switch between that modes. And here is how we navigate between IOS modes. As I told you that if you want to go from the user exec to privileged exec, you should type enable. If you want to pass from privileged exec mode to global config mode, you should type conf t. If you want to pass from global config mode to a specific interface config mode, you should type the interface that you want to go in, like interface gig01. And please keep in mind that exit command is used for passing to upper mode. For example, when you're in config mode and if you type exit, you can go to the privileged exec mode. And Cisco IOS has really, really cool options, really, really cool help. The first one is context sensitive help. Please keep in mind that question mark is your best friend when you're in, when you're in Cisco IOS. For example, we have a command named clock set. This is the name of our command. We should set like something like the clock set.
this is how, how we should type the command, clock set, something like that. But if you want, if you type something like that, C-O-L-O-K, as you can see that you forgot the C in here, iOS warns you. That's saying that unknown command to you, as you can see. And you check the command that you type, and you see that, oh my god, I forgot in the C. It would be clock. And as I told you that, question mark is always your best friend. If you forget the command, and you can type that, after C, L, and if you type the question mark in here, that shows you that the commands that you can use. For example, C, L, question mark. iOS tells you, tells you that, man, you can use clear or clock. Okay, choose one of them. For example, I wrote clock and I pushed enter. Here is another warning, which is saying as incomplete command. Okay, because as I told you, the whole of the command is clock, set, and current time. When I see this warning, clock, space, and if I type my best friend again, that shows you that the commands that I can use. In this scenario, that shows you that I can use just one command, which is set, and here's the explanation of the command. I was saying us that you can use set in here, and that means that you can set the time and day. And let's go ahead with the context sensitive help. For example, here is the our command clock set, blah 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 blah. And after that, when I hit the ender, that shows me that it's incomplete again. And after when I use the question mark, that shows me that I should use month of the year by typing this and the same scenario again. And here is the shortcuts and hotkeys that I can use in Cisco iOS. Tab. Tab is a really awesome feature. You can complete the remainder of the command or the keyboard using tab. And what we really use most is down and up arrow. When you hit the down arrow, you scroll forward through the former commands. And when you hit the up arrow, you scroll backward through the former commands. For example, I typed IP address, blah, blah, blah. And after that, I typed, oh, for example, router, OSPF, blah, blah, blah. If I want to navigate between these, I should hit the up and down arrows. arrows. And you can use the control C to abort the current command and exit the configuration mode. And you can use control shift six to interrupt an iOS process such as ping or trace. For example, you ping somewhere and if you want to stop it immediately, you, you should use the control shift six combination. And another great feature is abbreviated commands. Commands can be abbreviated to the minimum number of characters that, identify, uh, that identifies a unique selection. For example, you can use sh int instead of show interfaces. That's a really cool thing to use. And here is the commonly used show commands. One show version. Please pay attention that we are in the user privileged mode when we are using the show commands. The first command is show version, which displays the iOS version and device information and etc. Other commands that we use is show IP ARP, which displays the IP MAC address mappings to us. Another great show command is show flash, which we can display the files in the flash. And here is the kink command that you can use, show running config, which displays the current configuration running on the device. This is gonna be maybe the most, most important command that you're gonna use. And we have show CDP neighbors, which displays connected Cisco neighbors to us. We have show VLAN to display the VLAN information. 
and we have show MAC address table which displays the MAC address table to us and we have also a show IP route which shows us the routing table. And let's take a look to the Cisco IOS configuration basics. The first thing we are going to check is host names. Host names are the identities of the devices in the network. And we should really need to configure this. Because it's so hard to identify devices without host name while making configuration in a network. Host names start with letter and ends with a letter or digit. And space is not allowed. For example, you can use a host name like this. My switch 7. It's okay. But you cannot use that. My whoops, space switch dot. You cannot get the my switch 7 by using a space between the characters. And here's how we can configure the host name. As you can see that we are in the privileged exec mode. And I'm using configure terminal command to get into the config mode. And when I am in config mode, I'm using hostname myswitch7. And that's it. And here is how we can limit access to devices. Access to devices can be limited using by passwords. As I can told you before, as I told you before, you should set passwords for console, telnet, and SSH sessions. That provides security for unauthorized access and please don't forget to implement it. And if I want to limit the access to the privileged exec, exec mode, I have two options. I can use a enable password or I can use an enable secret post password. If I use the enable secret password to limit the access to the privileged exec mode, that also encrypts the password, so it's recommended to use the enable secret command. For example, I'm in the privileged exec mode, as, as you see that in the picture. And I'm going into the config mode because I'm going to set a enabled password. When I get into the config mode, I'm typing enable password Cisco. And I type, it, I type that enable secret class. As you can see that I set two different passwords to limit the access to the privileged exit mode. And when I use the show run command, show running command, you can see that the password that I set with enable password is clear text and I can easily monitor that. But the password that I set with enable secret command is hashed. The clear text is class, but as you can see the boo, I see something encrypted. And that's why we should use enable secret to limit the access to the privileged exec mode instead of enable password. And if I want to limit the access to the user exec mode, I can use the comments that you can see. For example, if I want to assign a talent password, here are the comments that I can use. Line VTY04. Login, password, space, the password that I can use. And that's it. If I want to assign a console port password, I can use the line console zero command, then login and password. But man, what's VTY04? I couldn't understand something. I didn't understand anything. VTI lines are the logical connection points to the router that are used by Telnet as well as SSH to remotely access your router. For example, if I use VTY04, that means this device can support five sessions at the same time. And here is the another great comment that we should use always. Service password encryption command. This command encrypts all passwords for show running config. Even if I use enable password instead of enable secret, as you can see that in the example, I'm using a enable password and my password is Cisco. But after that, if I use the service password encryption command, 
Then, if I check the show running config command, you can see that enable password is hashed. That's encrypted. So we should use the service password encryption command to always. Another Cisco IOS that we can another Cisco IOS property that we can use is banner multi. This is mostly used for giving a legal notice or something to prevent unauthorized access to device. You can use the banner multi and you type your message in here, and that's the who command. And as you can see in the picture, that's just a message. That doesn't do something in the configuration. That doesn't have anything, but that's just a warning message. Welcome to TechNet.com. All connections are monitored and recorded and disconnect immediately if you are not in an authorized user. And I made my configs on my device. I changed the IP address of interfaces. I set the routing protocol and blah, blah, blah. I did something like that. And after all the configurations that I made, and if I want to save my configuration file, I should use copy run start command, or I should use write memory command. With these commands, running configurations are copied to MVRAM, and they become active when even if your device is reloaded. So please don't forget to use that two commands when you make a configuration change and save it. In this section, we'll talk about the IP addressing of devices. Network devices must be configured with an IP address and subnet mask. IP address has a format like that, and numbers between 0 and 255 are used. For example, 10, 41, 25, and 7. That's an example of an IP address. And subnet mask format will be examined later. What can I tell you in this section is you cannot use an IP address something like that. Blah, blah, blah. Because you can use the numbers between 0 and 255. Okay. So let's take a look at how I can IP address for the computers. I have two options to obtain an IP address for my computer. The first option I can obtain an IP address and DNS address automatically from a device which is using DHCP protocol. The second option that I can use for my computer, I can use an IP address for my computer is, I choose the use the following IP address in here, and I set my IP address and subnet mask and default gateway manually. And let's take a look to the IP addressing for routers. If I want to set an IP address to a router, I use this command, interface, fast Ethernet, blah, blah. IP address is assigned to interfaces on routers. Okay. I use this command, interface, fast Ethernet, zero, zero, in this example. This can change whatever IP, uh, whatever in which interface I need to uh, configure. And I type IP address, my IP address, and my subnet mask that I want to configure on the router. Please keep in mind that IP address is assigned to interfaces on routers, and IP address is not assigned to physical ports for switches like interfaces. It's assigned to VLANs. We are going to check the, what VLAN is in our next sections. So just keep in mind that you cannot assign an IP address to a physical port for switch, layer 2 switch. You need to assign your IP address under the VLANs. So use the interface, whatever VLAN you, you need to use, and then you assign the IP address in the same style when you assign to your router. IP address, your IP, and your subnet mask that you want to use.